there. Can you confirm it that you are uh, seeing, you can see my, my PowerPoint people? Can you confirm me? Yes, doctor. Okay, For thanks. Okay, let's see if I can try to write here. Damn it. And there. Now, okay. Uh, uh, about the assignment, okay. Okay, so what we're trying to analyze is this. Let's suppose we have a, a, a long plate here in the bottom. And here we have a longitudinal stiffener That we're trying to analyze. This is welded to the plate. Okay. Now, here, around here, we have a bulkhead, watertight bulkhead. And in the bulkhead, we have a longitudinal, I'm sorry, a vertical stiffener. So this is the a uh, bulkhead stiffener, vertical stiffener, there. And also, I'm going to draw only one, but we have a, a strong transversal frame, like this. Okay, so we're going to analyze this element from here to the connection, to the connection, to the connection, and here. And vertically, we're going to have this element like this. How many elements are we going to consider? Uh, five. They are not aligned. They are not aligned. You can see that. For example, uh, where am I? A key here. So this is your global, and you could consider, for example, this is your uh, y direction. Now, loads. Uh, this is uh, like an instructor of a ship, okay? And let's suppose that this bulkhead, uh, this bulkhead separates that something, some liquid in this uh, tank. And on the other tank, it's empty. So let's suppose that this is empty and this is full. So you see that you have pressure on the bulkhead that will bend this element. Now in the bottom plate, which is this one here, we have the pressure from the outside there. So if you want a, like a summary, we have something like this. This is the structure. We have, let's suppose that we have several of these bulkheads and we have a longitudinal stiffener and we have a vertical stiffener. We have some transverse elements like this, like this. So this longitudinal element is this one here. So we're gonna go from here to here. These two joints are this and that. This and that. And then we have this, which is in the connection with the vertical stiffener of the bulkhead. And then we go to the other side of the compartment. And in the vertical direction, we have another element, which is defined with the joint. Okay, so on this side, we have pressure, body pressure because of this liquid. This is empty. And in the bottom, since it's floating, we have the pressure from the water. Okay, so this is the analysis that we want to do. Now, in, in the case of the report, 
they are using a very old method called the moment distribution method. And they present its their solution. Okay, we are going to compare finite elements with that. Questions about this, this uh, system that we're going to analyze. Victor, yeah. we, we assume that all ends uh, are clamped, right? Yeah, you can, yeah. Let, let me, we will see that in a minute. Now, the next thing that we need to do is check the loads. Okay, and we can say, okay, about loads. Okay, let's suppose we have a beam here, and let's suppose that we have, this is force per unit length. This is a beam, okay? And since we're going to analyze this with finite elements, we need to transform this into a beam element, but we have to consider only loads, only joints. So forces are easy. If this is P, this force, this force here, and this is the length of the element, let's call it little l. Okay, so uh, the force equivalent will be simply P L divided by two. So we have half of the total force here and the rest here. But also you see that this force is pointing the upward. So we're gonna have as a result, a moment here and a moment here. Okay, so the equivalent moment is going to be P L squared over 12. In this case, it points in that direction when the force points upward. And in this joint, we're gonna have in that direction, okay, when the points, when the force points upward. Uh, we will explain this. in next chapter. We're gonna use a, an inertial, I'm sorry, an energy approach in order to do that. So we, somebody asked me about a, how can we have a concentrated force and convert it into something like this. Yes, this, this case is we're going to uh, study in next chapter. By now, let's accept that we have a, if we have a variation in, in load, what we can do is we can take an average value and with this average value, we can do these operations and apply uh, and convert this distributed load into concentrated forces and concentrated moments in the joints. Discretization, we worry only about what happens in the joints. People? Okay, now let me now let me share with you the the document. Let's see I hear. Doctor, I have a question is with respect to the homework. Uh, you, and this is the last time you can analyze the represented the, the strain, the force stern, uh, the distributed load uh, we transform the transform the, the other representation of the strain stress force. Uh, the, in, in, in one joint, is possible to combine the moment and we respect our homework. You have to. Yes. You have to do it. 
Okay. Yes. Uh, okay. Be because uh, the distributed force causes a, a moment, a net moment. Mm -hmm. So that you have to include it, definitely. Okay, Thank here you. I have the, the report, okay? It's a 64 report, okay? And this is a title and all of that. And uh, you can take a quick look at it, okay? So here, for example, you see something that we started in the previous uh, semester, primary, secondary, and tertiary stresses, okay? But right now, we're only interested in the secondary behavior, okay? Okay, ta, 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 let's go here, and it's, uh, okay, that's loading, that, that's, remember, this is uh, English system of units, so these expressions are specifically for that, okay? So we have to be careful with this, okay? Here, you have this expression that we just explained, the equivalent moment is WL squared over 12. This W, this expression here, is the, the value of the force per unit length. See, S is the force and H is the spacing. So, uh, I'm sorry, S is the, the pressure. Time spacing gives you force per unit length. That's something that we also used in, in Schubstructor's uh, course. Okay. Um, now, as, as you can imagine, see, these are the details. These are the details. Uh, this is the section, if you want to analyze it. Um, now, here, this is the, the, this is the geometry of the, of the system, okay? Here, in the bottom, you see that there is some pressure from the water. This is several bulkheads. This is very strong transversals. So this is the area where we are analyzing. A longitudinal connected to a vertical uh, reinforcement of the water table head. This compartment could be empty or could be loaded. So if it is loaded and this is empty, that you have a net force on the left. If the, the, the ship is considered on dock, there's no pressure from the water. It is floating, then you have pressure upwards. So there are several loading conditions and all of this is analyzed in this case. I'm asking you to do only one single case, okay? This is the case that I want you to analyze and this is in figure four, okay? So you see here that in the bottom, see, you have the pressure from the water on the hull. And here, you have the pressure pointing to the left, meaning that this compartment is full and this compartment is empty, okay? Somebody asked me about the boundary conditions. In this case, in here, on this end, on this end, and in the top of this part of the bulkhead, in these three points, you are going to consider clamped conditions. But also, also, in this point, when you have the, the, the influence of the transfer web, this point here cannot move vertically. It can rotate, but it cannot move vertically, similar to this one. This case here, you can consider it as, as, as a pin it, but there is not much of a problem. You will see that because of the, the action of this element, of the area of this element, of the vertical element, okay? This point cannot move much in the vertical direction, okay? This, this force here will produce a, an, a, an actual response on the longitudinal, but because of the area of the longitudinal, okay? The, the actual uh, motion will be very small. So, in general, we can have this point simply supported. So it can rotate if you want, similar to this and that, the ends are going to be clamped, okay? And here, this is the application of the process, okay? 
And at the end, you're gonna have, take a quick look at that, and you're gonna have the values of the bending moment. You can calculate that with using finite elements and we can compare. Please remember that this is, this is uh, English system of units, and you have to use international system of units. Other than that, you can compare results, okay? Uh, here, you see that you have the inertia of the longitudinal, you have the inertia of the vertical, and here you have the dimensions, you have the dimensions, so you can calculate, you can calculate the um, area. Now, in this part here, you see that the, there is some pressure from the water, from the seawater, but also you have pressure from the cargo that you have in here in this tank. That's why you see that there are these arrows point downwards and these arrows point upward. So in this part here, you have to consider the difference between these two. The load, the weight of the load points downward, the pressure from the, the, from the sea points upward. So you have to consider the difference. On this part here, you have only the, the influence from the pressure downwards. So you have the force upward. In this joint here, please be careful with the, with the final, with the resulting external moments, because you have moment from this, moment from this, and moment from the difference between these two. How many elements do you have to consider? Anybody? How many elements? Five. Five. If you want to include more elements, you can do it. Okay? I can give you extra credit for that. So instead of having five, you could consider one joint in between. So you have a better... Uh, representation of the bending moment. Remember that this is the distributed load. So the bending moment will vary with a quadratic uh, polynomial variation. But since we, we use finite elements, we're going to obtain a result of a linear variation. So if you want to, in, to improve your results, you can put, put one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, and 11, joints, and you will have 10 uh, elements. In that case, the distribution of the bending moment will be uh, more precise. I, I will give you extra credit for that if you do that in the, in the calculations. Did everybody get this uh, report, this PDF of the report? Did anybody could not uh, download this from the Teams platform? Please tell me, tell me something. Ms. Mr. Ramon, did you get this report? Mr. Ramon, did you get this report? Oh, he left. Mr. Big Mark Diaz. No, no, doctor. I, I don't, I am Ramon. Only the first question I finished for the report. No, no, I, I'm asking, I'm asking is, did you, Download from the Teams platform. Did you download the uh, report? Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. you report. Okay, so somebody did it. Let's ask somebody in the in the Andes, Miss Lopez. Miss Lopez. Miss Lopez, are yes, you there? Yes. Were you were you able to download the report, the PDF report? Yes, in okay. the Teams and on the report. Okay. Record. Okay, so you got it. So. Good luck. See you Monday. Thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, doctor. You're welcome. Thank you, doctor. Thank you, doctor.